and welcome back to another episode of BRF Shots on Us. These are mini episodes which are shorter than our long form episodes, just appetizing little bites with facts in them. Speaking of appetizing, who likes cake? Very good. <laughs> wow, what a great introduction. And it only took us how many? Like five tries to get here? <laughs> yeah, only five tries. Um, <laughs> for our, we'll keep it short. We'll keep the banter to a minimum. Um, can't make any promises though. Let's start yeah. with an interesting fact that I discovered that includes trial by cake. Have oh. you heard of this, Ragini? Never. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> apparently, a trial by cake is a medieval trial by ordeal. So, you know how you'd say, you know, trial by combat, etc. One of them is trial by cake. It involved swallowing a dry lump of consecrated bread or coarsenid which is a strange word to, to pronounce because, <laughs> because it just is. Uh, and the person who was doing this had to eat the bread, swallow the bread without choking, turning pale or shaking. If, if Jeff was like, I want to do trial by cake and uh, shook even a little bit while swallowing the piece of cake, he would have to suffer the punishment he was, that was originally intended for him anyway. Oh. I was not expecting this to be, yeah, I, I, I don't know what I was anticipating, but I don't think I was anticipating this. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a story that Godwin, who was once the Earl of Kent, choked on a lump of bread after solemnly swearing that he had no hand in the assassination of the king's brother at the time. And uh, ironically, he choked and he died while after he made this declaration. <laughs> So I'm guessing people in the audience were, there we go. <laughs> no one mess with trial by cake. <laughs> yeah. um, there's also an interesting little aside to this called witch's cake. A witch's cake was a much later stranger twist on the trial by cake. By the Salem witch trials in 1692, a witch's cake was key in the first accusations of witchcraft. A cake or biscuit was made with rye flour and the urine of the afflicted person the cake was then fed to a dog. If the dog exhibited the same symptoms of illness that proved the presence of the witchcraft, and if it didn't, then it proved the woman innocent. Yeah. Wow, imagine? tough times, huh? Really <laughs> tough times. <laughs> really tough times. So did you know that July 20th every year is celebrated as International Cake Day? Did not know that. Um, Mm. But there is a national cake day and most food related, day, you know, informal food holidays are usually a thing that is celebrated in the United States. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but International Cake Day is actually a Russian invention. It was founded okay. by the Kingdom of Love, an international non-commercial project that specializes in global, cultural, humanitarian and peacemaking initiatives. So this is a political holiday. Okay. <laughs> I think it sounds like politicians just made an excuse up to eat more cake. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually pretty much, I mean, they do have some themes of love and peace and friendship around it. But um, the first International Cake Day was celebrated in 2011 in nine countries, which included Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, <laughs> Azerbaijan, Georgia, Armenia, Israel and the United States. Uh, okay. The celebration was launched under the motto, I cake you, cute. Uh, hmm. And according to the International Cake Day team, the cake serves as a symbol of friendship, peace and mutual understanding between the countries and nations. And along with the motto, each International Cake Day also has its own independent theme. So the motto and the theme changes for each cake day mm -hmm. cake annually. Day. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it is selected by the organizing committee for the cake day. Okay. Past themes have included space, Planet of Love, Parade of the Planets, Visiting the Fairy Tale, Journey Through Time, and Garden of Love. So it sounds like a fun day to be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> and if anything really could bring people together, it's cake. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, and so basically, participating countries will host various events and activities connected to the theme and eat cake. I like Good this day. day. I will. <laughs> I'm happy to celebrate this day, <laughs> politician or not. Uh, speaking of cakes bringing people together, wedding cakes, they're the best, aren't they? I mean, it's a happy day as it is, and then you add cake to it. Why not? Now, um, <laughs> coming to the wedding of royal variety, have you heard of this tradition of preserving cakes from royal weddings? No. Did not know that this existed. Apparently, when Victoria married Prince Albert of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, 
in 1840, they had a similar tradition. They served fruitcake and it was tradition to save a piece of the cake. Some of the guests would take them home and they'd be, in fact, packaged very cutely in little containers or, you know, tins and embellished with the royal crest and the names of the bride and groom and things. (laughs) So she started off this, (laughs) she started off this tradition of fruitcake and it, carried on till William and Kate and then Harry and Meghan had a different kind of cake, rebels as they are. So throughout the 20th century, box cake souvenirs persisted. They've become collector's items and they go for thousands of dollars at auction. A slice of wedding cake from the wedding of Wallace Simpson and the Duke of Windsor, who abdicated as king, Mm. sold for $29,900 in 1998. One slice of cake. One slice of cake. So that's a fruit. sound buy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a solid fruit investment. Cake. <laughs> fruit cake at that. <laughs> From the wedding cake of Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips in 1973, who's the Queen's daughter, to that of Prince William and Catherine Middleton in 2011, the slices of fruit cake came enclosed in neat tins or boxes. We'll put some pictures up on the, on the Instagram. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have those at my wedding. Just shove one in a guest's hand and be like, be gone, here you go. <laughs> Sell it at an auction sometime later. Sell it. <laughs> but the tradition of boxed fruitcake souvenirs were bucked when Prince Harry and Meghan married. Theirs wasn't a fruitcake. And it's unlikely that their lemon and endlerfire cake would last for decades anyway. So there's also pictures of some pretty tragic pictures of uh, Victoria and Albert's fruitcake that still exists. And there's a close up and I do not recommend it to people with um, (laughs) light stomachs. I can't wait to see it. (laughs) Now, have you, Ragini, tell me, have you heard of Jaffa cakes? Yes. Okay. I hadn't heard of them till I moved to the UK. Uh, My husband's a huge fan of them. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't know that they existed. And I'm yeah, slightly... right. Yeah, I don't think you get them outside of the UK. Yeah. Um, and I'm slightly confused by them. Because the first thing I thought was, oh, it's a biscuit. That's I remember saying that to Dean. And he was like, oh, no, no. It's 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 different. It's something else altogether. And, it's a cake. Um, it's like spongy. and Yeah. And they're called Jaffa cakes. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they are cakes and not biscuits. And it's been proven in court. So oh, McVitie's okay. has been making Jaffa cakes. So they don't Jaffa take it cakes. very seriously then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> please don't mess. So McVitie's had been making Jaffa cakes since 1927. But they were challenged for labeling their chocolate orange treats as cakes in 1991 by Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. Obviously, it comes down to money. It was accepted under UK law that biscuits were a luxury item and the full vat would be levied. But cakes, on the other hand, have been regarded as a staple food, so was zero rated for the purposes of vat. So, which means that it's in the interest of McVitie's to pass off Jaffa cakes as cakes, even if they are similar to a biscuit. They went to court and they proved that it was a cake <laughs> in court. <laughs> Lawyers argued this. <laughs> How do you um, prove that it's a cake? You just say ingredients. Are ingredients for cake and biscuits different? <laughs> so it was it was based on a long argument of uh, size, shape, chocolate, this thing, that thing. But the key turning point was that when McVitie's highlighted how cakes harden when they go stale and biscuits go soggy and a Jaffa cake goes hard. And so the case was proven. That's what she said. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, so that's the story of how Jaffa cakes are by law. Cakes and not biscuits. Don't you dare mess that up. (laughs) All right. And that is the end of of this episode of Shots on Us. And we will see you soon. Bye, guys. See you soon.